In this video, we'll look on how to detail columns from the Foundation Footings app using the tools provided by Powerpack Detailing Plugin. We'll be exploring how to efficiently place ribbers on multiple columns at different levels using the plugin. Before detailing the columns, ensure that the foundation is properly prepared in your Revit model. You can watch the previous video to see how to detail foundation footings using the plugin. We can dive into detailing our columns using the Powerpack Detailing plugin. I will zoom to the structural drawing document to view the column details. The project contains six types of columns with different ribber configurations as you can see. In this video, we will learn how to use the plugin to detail column 1. In column 1 details, the required longitudinal bars are 6x20 ribber type and Y8 stirrups with 200mm spacing. We can go to the 3D view to view our columns. I will zoom to this column then select it. This is a C1 type column. To select all C1 columns, select any, then right click, select all instances, then visible in view. All C1 columns have been selected in the view. I will switch to power pack detailing tab, select create group, then select footing or column. In this dialog, we have conditions for the selected columns. The columns should have identical families, types, material, height, top column which means at the same level, not part of other groups, and identical cover values. We can click on close to exit. With the columns condition in mind, we also need to determine the footing type supporting the column. I will select on this footing, right click, select all instances, visible in view. We are going to create a column group for columns supported with the highlighted footings from this side. We'll start with the base column group. I can zoom, then select the column footing, right click, select all instances, visible in view. At this side of the structure, the two corner footings are both F1 footing type. With the project details explained, we can proceed to create our column groups. Select create group then select footing or column. I will select the base columns one by one. Grouping elements is crucial because it will save time. All the selected columns are supported with the same footing type as earlier defined. I will press finish after selecting all my columns. In the group name, I will type C1 base columns. Then press OK. Group elements can be located here in the design status dialog. Click on close to exit the command. Go to create group, then select footing or column. Now, we can select on the top columns aligned with the previously selected bottom columns. I will continue to select the required columns. With groups, the generated reinforcement will be added to all columns in the group at once. I will select my columns up to where I selected the bottom ones here at this column. Click on finish to complete the selection. In the group name, I will type C1 top columns. Then press OK to finish. I will close the design status dialog. We can proceed to define our reinforcement assumptions for the column groups. Click to drop here. Then select Reinforcement Assumptions. Select any column in this group, then hit Finish. We can start by defining our longitudinal reinforcement. Set the reinforcement solution to user-defined number of bars. The plugin has a range of tools and parameters for defining column ribbers as you can see. We can set the ribbers to cut off at the beam top face. The preview updates with the settings. In the structural drawing document, Two bars are required along X and three bars along Y. You can edit hooks from here. I will leave as default then go to transversal reinforcement. Settings for the stirrups can be found here. In bar spacing, I will select uniform spacing then type 200 as provided in the document. We can go to top bar settings. Here, select on extended column bars in brackets main. The bars will extend from the footing bars. I can set the bars length to lap length. 
the plugin offers more options in Riba detailing as you can see. I will go to the bottom starter bus settings then set to extended column bus in brackets main. Click on L-shaped starter bus to add hooks at the bus which will rest on the footing ribbers. You can view the preview from here. I will set the orientation to exterior. You can edit hooks here. You can set the bus length for the leg from here. I will select imposed then give a value of 350. As you can see, the plugin automatically knows the footing height supporting the column. The imposed bar length is the distance from here up to here for the ribber from the column to the footing. You can edit longitudinal or transversal for the bottom bars. Press OK to exit. To generate reinforcements, select constructive dispositions, then select a column within the group and hit finish. We can close the design status dialog. I can zoom to view the generated reinforcement. Ribbers have been added to all columns in the group with the parameter defined in the reinforcement assumptions. This plugin saves time in the detailing of reinforcing concrete elements. We can go to the plan view to look at the reinforcement details before editing the column bars first. Here is the required arrangement for the cage. An additional pin is required. If we go to the 3D view, I can zoom to the bus then select this set. You can edit the ribber set from the modify tab and still edit layout and spacing. If I select on the stirrup, I still can edit the spacing value from here. To edit the bus within the plugin, select on main bus command, then select any column. Reinforcement settings can be found here. We can start by editing the main reinforcement. I will set the ribber type along X and Y to Y20. You can uncheck automatic hook length then set bottom length to your desired value. I will type 350 for the bottom length. Secondary bars can be edited from here. This plugin automatically details the ribbers with the provided settings in the main bars command. Click on transversal reinforcement to edit the stirrups. Pins are required along B. I will set distribution to spacing then edit my spacing to 200. With these settings, I can press OK to update the bars in the model. All columns have the same ribber settings in the defined column group. After placing the ribbers, you can utilize the editing tools provided by the Powerpack Detailing plugin to make adjustments for the position, quantity, spacing, or other parameters based on the design specifications. We can proceed to detail the top columns. We already defined the group for the columns. Select on reinforcement assumptions to define the design parameters, then select any column in the group and hit finish. In longitudinal reinforcement, set solution to user defined number of bars, then set to beam top face cutoff. Edit the Y bars to 3. We can leave the hooks as default then go to transversal reinforcement to edit the stirrups. In bar spacing, we can pick uniform spacing then give a value of 200. Select the top starter bars then set to no starter bars. Set the bottom starter bars as no starter bars then hit OK. To generate the reinforcement, select constructive dispositions. Then select any column in the group and hit finish. We can close this dialog. All top columns now have ribbers detailed with the parameters given in the assumptions. Lapping has been placed as we defined earlier as you can see. Ensure that the placement of ribbers follows constructive dispositions as per the structural drawings and specifications. Verify that the reinforcement layout meets the design intent and complies with the relevant building codes and standards. To customize the placement and configuration of the column bars, we'll utilize additional commands from the main bars command provided by the plugin. Select on main bars command from here, then select any column in the group. I will expand longitudinal reinforcement then select main bars. We can edit the ribber set from here. For the top group, 
we can define the rebar type for x and y direction. I will use y16 as the bar type for both x and y. Bottom and top offsets can also be adjusted from here. Hooks can be edited from here. We can set the top hook angle to 90 degrees to add a top hook and check automatic hook's length to adjust the top hook length. I can type here 150 to manually define the length. With this, we can continue to edit the settings. No starter bars have been defined for both top and bottom. We can edit the stirrups from here. We can leave pins along B. Set distribution by to spacing. Type the spacing value below here. I will type 200, then press OK. The generated ribbons sometimes have an orientation error as you can see. To fix this, simply select on the bars that require to be adjusted. Then press space in the keyboard a few times until the bars adjust to the correct orientation. The bars are now fixed as you can see. I will go to the settings again. Select on main bars command, then select any column in the group. Go to main bars under longitudinal reinforcement. I can set the top hook angle back to zero, then hit OK. By following these steps and leveraging the capabilities of the power pack detailing plugin in Revit 2024, you can efficiently place RIBA on multiple columns at different levels while ensuring compliance with design requirements and construction standards. You can repeat the same procedure for the corner columns as we have discussed. First, create a group, then define the reinforcement assumptions, then generate the bars with the constructive disposition command. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials, tips and tricks. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.